All right, so this evening I want to speak to, it is more to a topic I have titled, it is more than just your business. Or it is more than just your affair. Or it is more than just your matter. Let's pray first before we start. Father, we thank you that your word goes forth with simplicity and with accuracy. We thank you for utterance both for the speaker and the hearers. We thank you that by this grace we are established in your righteousness in the name of Jesus. You know, I, when I got the invite, I started to think that at this time of the year, it's so easy to share around those end of year themes. You know, things like evaluating your year, uh, things like Thanksgiving, things like setting goals for 2024. You know, and if you like dramatic titles, things like 11th Hour Miracle. And I thought about it, and, and, and there's nothing wrong, really, in every sense with, with, with sharing along those lines, if that is what the Lord has laid upon you, absolutely everything totally correct with it. But see, there was something Pastor said in his message on Sunday, and I don't know how many of us heard that line, but it got me thinking, well, I was in place of prayer during the night, and I asked the Lord, what exactly will you have me speak to this evening? He said something, it was just a line. That for, 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 for all of us, our concern shouldn't be so much as to what should I do on the 25th of October as much as what should I do in this season. How many heard that part? But the part, we, the message that was, that was sent to, to our campus. And, he, and he, he said that to emphasize the fact that it isn't about, about the specific dates, so to say, in the chronos. But as much as what the season over your life currently is. Because you can do the right thing seemingly in the chronos, but it's out of sync with the season that you are meant to be operating in. In the Old Testament, once the, the cloud moved, it didn't matter what thought process you had. If you didn't move when the cloud moved, you were exposed automatically. And so I asked the Lord that, so I know it is, it is the first week of, almost the second week of December, but what, but what will you have me speak this evening and say, share along the lines of, it is more than just your business. Second Kings, you know, if, if you are in business, Second Kings chapter 4 verse 1, if you are in business, they, they, they differentiate between the financial year and the operational year. The financial year may end where, where the budget is targeted. But during the operational year, businesses are still conducted. And some of the ideas, some of the links, some of the setups that would cascade into the financial year and affect your budget may happen during your operational year. And you must understand that it is more than just the dates on the calendar. It is recognizing the season and flowing accordingly with the seasons. Second Kings chapter 4. A popular story, but the Lord gave me A new insight as I studied the scriptures. The Bible talked about now there was a certain, are we all there? If you're there, say amen. amen. If you're on your way, say oh me. Or just follow the screen. It says, now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophet unto Elijah, saying, thy servant, my husband, is dead. And thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord, and the creditor is come to take unto him my two sons to be bondmen. Let's pause there temporarily. Now, this was the sad story of a woman who had lost her husband, who was one of the servants of Elijah, Elisha the prophet. And let's assume to, for, 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 for the conversation purpose, he was also one of the sons of the prophet. And after a number of years, this guy was owing the creditor a certain amount of money. And the creditor decided, you know what? It is time to come for my money. Now, I, I asked a number of questions from the beginning when I, I, I had to dwell on the fact that the wife of one of the sons of the prophet had to go and borrow money for sustenance. And it got me thinking. And not only did she have to go and borrow money, she borrowed the money from a creditor. Now, in Israel in those days, there were, there were, there were creditors that leased or loaned out money 
for a certain percentage. And she went and borrowed money from, from, I don't want to call any company in the country, but she went to borrow money. And I'm asking myself, why did she have to go out to borrow money from the creditor? And my simple mind said, could it be that the other sons of prophet were equally as broke as she was? Because if they had the means and they had the resource that she could leverage on within the house, she wouldn't go to the creditor. And the first thought to myself as I studied the scripture again is the fact that broke can't help broke. The most two broke people can offer each other is prayers and comfort. But broke cannot help broke. And you can tell me, well, 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 it's not all about money. Let's agree it's about money. Okay, we remove the all, but it's about money. He said, well, Bible says that it is the, 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 love of, the love of money is the root of, it is the love of money. Bible says in the same scripture, money answereth all things. So let's establish that for certain, that broke can't help broke. And it doesn't matter how you want to twist and turn it in your mind. That having means and having the resource in the time when you need it brings glory to God. And if, if you persist to say it's not about money, then you are feeding off somebody else's money. So it's not about money to you. But let's establish that as adults and say, it is not about emotions either. Broke cannot help broke. And so the wife of the son of the prophet was broke and she had to go to an outsider. That in itself was bad enough. And one of the things that over the last few years that if you've been in a, in, 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 in a ministry like ours, like, like the Covenant Nation, you, 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 you should have come to a place by now where there should be an unwillingness in your heart to live without God's promise. Every promise you have seen in the word, every blessing you have seen in the word, by now there should be an unwillingness in your heart. There should be an unease you should feel sad. You should feel angry, in fact. If there is not a representation of that promise or blessing in your life to some extent. Because the Bible says that when a promise is fulfilled, it is like good news from a far country. There should be a willingness or an unwillingness in you. You should say to yourself nothing less than what the Lord has promised in his word will be sufficient for me. Anything less than that would not be sufficient. I don't know any, how many of you are in relationships. Okay, don't raise your hand. I just, I, I said to myself consciously, don't tell people not, just in case somebody gets discouraged, ah, the person I was eyeing, she, so don't raise your hand. But, 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 but you know yourselves, if you are married or you're in a relationship, for that sister you've been calling her name before the Lord just realized that she raised her hand, just realized that, you thought it was an empty parking lot. No, it's occupied. But you, you, you remember, you know, this is, this is, let me speak for myself and for people, my, 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 my contemporary. Campus love is sweet. Campus love is sweet because more often than not, because your hostels are around each other, you know, at night you can walk towards, you know, somebody will walk and greet the other person, then the other person will see the other person off, then you say, let me just see you off again, and then there's a scene off, and then there's a scene off, and there's a scene off. We used to call those Abrahamic walks in the campus. You know, it's a lot more difficult now. We're going to visit the person in Nigeria on Todd Milan Bridge. I'm missing you. you. Just tell the person, just pray, just pray. You're not going to turn back on Todd Milan Bridge. I know. But the, but the interesting thing is that there are days when you're unwilling to, to be without the person. Say, so don't go yet. And even when you know they, 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 they are using lines on you that you know this is just lamba, but you just, let's just, let's just. I mean, somebody sends you a card and says, and says, 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 you're, says you're my sunshine. You know, that's a lie. <laughs> Are the rest of us living in darkness? <laughs> but you believe it because you're unwilling to live without the person. 
Many years ago, I've been married for 20, 21, going 22 years now. And I, I saw one line that I mean, that resonated very well. So I used to use it for my wife for a very long while. And I don't use it anymore. You know, there was this line that said that if, if a star were to drop for every time I think about you, the sky will soon be empty. <laughs> in other words, the world should just live in darkness because of two stupid people. Oh my. But it was an expression of the unwillingness to love as expressed towards themselves to be without each other. How exciting it would be if you have that unwillingness to say to God's promises, I'm unwilling to live without you coming to pass in my life. And you persevere in the place of prayer. You persevere in the place of confession. You persevere in the place of meditation as we're being taught until there's a manifestation in your life. And so the wife of the son of the prophet went out to borrow money. And that in itself was bad. And the second thing I said to myself, why did he go out to the creditor? Perhaps there was a thought in his mind that he, his business was his business. He could handle his business by himself. He doesn't want his business to become public consumption. He doesn't want his business to be one that people have to, to contribute. He wanted to, be, he wanted to be the man in the house. Yeah, it's okay. Acceptable. The only problem is that it is your business as long as you can handle it. The moment you can't handle the business any longer and there's a threat of embarrassment to the rest of us, it is no longer your business. You know, as I was, I was driving from work, work in, in, in between Mushi and Jaraba, so I, I know what happens in those places. And there's some people that are listening to me this evening, either here or on, online, that are involved. You know, you are playing over 2.5. You are playing first, first to throw in. You are playing, what else did they play? <laughs> if you know it, then you've done it. H to H. Oh, yeah, mention, 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 mention it. Okay, you just passed by the place. You didn't play. It was okay. It's understandable. One X two. But see, all of those are your business. Until the day they say you, you go to covenant. What is what, what are you doing here? Then it becomes our business. And so, according to Le Leviticus twenty five. If you owe a credit or money beyond a certain point and you can't pay, he has the right to lay hold of your son. And this was the position this woman had come to. A point where there was an imminent threat of embarrassment to the sons of the prophet. And let me just say this very quickly in this conversation. That not every sin that is done by good people turns out good. The son of the prophet had good intention to take care of his family. Went about it the wrong way, and it turned out bad. Good people sometimes make stupid decisions. Let's go back to the scripture reading. First, Second Kings chapter 4, and let's continue verse 2. And so the wife came to the prophet, Elisha. So in verse 1, the Bible says, she, she cried and said, and Elijah said unto her, what shall I do for you? No, we can go to verse 2. And Elijah said to her, what shall I do for you? Tell me, what hast thou in thy house? And she said, thy handmaid had not anything in the house save a pot of oil. You've heard many times people preach about this and pastors preach about this as well. But this was the point. It got to verse 1 where she decided to cry out. She decided at this point, we can no longer keep quiet. Her husband borrowed the money and had died. After his death, I'm sure she, she had tried to find different ways of coping. And it just wasn't working. So the Bible said she decided to cry out. And I want to say this to someone here. 
that if your going out did not produce the help you were looking for, it is time to come back home. If your going out has not produced the help, if your if your if your dwelling and dealing in certain cycles and certain cycles of, of, of friendship and relationship has not produced what you went out to look for, don't you think it's time to come back home? She came back to Elijah. I wonder what her husband was thinking when he didn't go and meet Elijah. But she decided it was time to cry out. And in the covenant nation, there, there are different opportunities being created. From the covenant community groups to different platforms through which you can come and find a place. If your going out has not produced the results, come back home. Come back home. Yeah, it comes with a certain degree of, I didn't get it right, but come back home. She had to decide at this point, put aside the shame, and cry in the house. Which was what the husband could have done from the onset. So she came and she cried unto Elijah. But let me say clearly at this point that there is the place for sincerity and ownership of your mistake when you come back home to cry. In the book of Luke, the Bible talked about the prodigal son. Luke 15 verse 17. After he had squandered the money in verse 16, the Bible said, when no man gave him anything to eat anymore, the Bible said he, he came to his senses. He came to himself. There is the place for ownership of whatever wrong decision led you into where you found yourself. There is a place. And, and there's only, to a certain extent, you can keep blaming people and blaming your past. Look at Exodus 32. I, I, I saw this this evening again, and I just, I just had a good laugh. This was Aaron, the brother, the older brother, of Moses. Moses had gone to the mountain of the Lord to receive the covenant, to receive the, 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 the commandment. And while he was on the mountain with Joshua, the people decided to have out, they had other ideas, build us a calf. Exodus 32. And so while they were there, Aaron said to them, bring your earrings, bring whatever it is. The Lord gave Moses the signal while he was on the mountain. He heard the sound. And he said, coming down from, see what Aaron said. Exodus 32. Yeah, look at, look at verse 22. Look at verse, look at verse, from verse 22. From verse 22. And, and Aaron said, this is speak, speaking to Moses. Because Moses asked him, what is it that you've done? He says, and Aaron said, let the anger of my Lord, let not the anger of my Lord wax out. Thou knowest the people that they are set in their mischief. See what Aaron is doing already. It's already shifting. That this wasn't my idea. Verse 33. For they said unto me, Make unto us gods which shall go before us. For as for this Moses, the man which brought us forth out of the land of Egypt, we wot not what is become of him. Verse 24. And I said to them, Whosoever had gold, let him break it, let them break it off. So they gave it unto me. I cast it into the fire, and there came out this calf. Are you, are you joking? Are you kidding? Is this plain? You threw it in the fire, and wow, calf came out. So one of my friends um, back, back a few years ago, who got pregnant, I think almost every year, like four years. So I saw her one day, and I said, what happened? I said, I don't know. I just slept and, and I'm like this. And I'm like, what kind of play is that? As, at least accept some responsibility for your actions. Aaron was so quick to say, I mean, I, I, I just collected the earrings. In fact, I thought, I thought it, was, it was the Ark of the Covenant that was going to come out. <laughs> Can we be serious? That's why... Never assist anyone who can define their contribution to the problem they are in. Okay, so we agree your, your stepmother did not like you, but what did you do? 
We agree your boss didn't particularly like, but what did you do? Never assist anyone who is not ready to say, this was my contribution. And this particularly is useful for married people. Someone starts the fight. The other person amplifies it in English. And he says, I was just on my own. No, you were, not, you were just not on your own. It takes two to tango. What is your contribution to the mess you found yourself in? You know that the stage at which you, the Lord, and your angels are currently, you are struggling with certain sins. Then you expose yourself and say, even your angel has left you before you. And then you say, I didn't know it would be like this. But what are you thinking? The Bible said in the book of Proverbs 17 verse 10, that a, re a rebuke goes deeper into the heart of a wise man than hundred strokes into the body of a fool. In other words, the fool just keeps saying, why are they eating out on me? Why are they eating me? But the wise man says, I understand the mistake I've made. So he cried out. But he cried out from the place where there was integrity, where there was sincerity, where there was ownership of his mistakes. And if some of us were to sit down, consider the year, consider the years. One of my friends was telling me he sat down with one man. I know the, the, the most miserable thing you want to hear someone say is that money has passed through my hand. Ah, money has passed through. I'm sure as I just said that statement, some of you have seen all the Shama joints you've gone to the last 12 months that the Lord was saying to you, if you add this and add this and add this every week. What's your part in the mess you found yourself? Let's go back to 2 Kings chapter 4. That's, that's our scripture reading this evening. 2 Kings chapter 4. And so Elijah said to her, what do you have? And the, the, the handmaid said, I have nothing in the house save a pot of oil. I'm not going to say much about that because wonderful messages already preached about that. Next verse. And he said, go, borrow the vessels abroad of thy neighbors. Even empty vessels, borrow not a few. Notice something. He didn't ask her to go and borrow oil. To add to the one she had in the house. He said, borrow everything. We're not going to borrow the oil. Borrow everything. You're not going to borrow the oil. And let me say that's to say this to someone in the house. You can borrow the vessel, but the oil must be in your house. And I will explain in a bit. You can borrow the vessel, but the oil must be in your house. And we can look at the oil in different ways. You can borrow strategy. You can borrow, you can borrow, you can borrow brand ideas. But the substance of the business, you must have it. Go borrow the vessels. It's on the precondition that you have oil. You can buy or you can borrow a weave on. But you must have the oil of character. Because when the weave on is on you and there is no oil, there will be no multiplication, there will be an explosion. You can borrow vessels, but you can't borrow the oil. Let's talk about oil from the standpoint of the, the anointing and the unction and the grace of God. David said, I've anointed my head with oil. My cup overflows. For your business, you can, you can, you can, you can think of creative ideas you've seen everywhere. But you must still bat that business in the place of prayer. 
You must still bear that business in the place of meditation. Pastor has taught us so much over the last almost 10 weeks. You can borrow vessels, but it's on the precondition that you have oil. And if everything ceases to exist, you must always have oil. Scripture says, let your head always have oil and your garment pure. We live in a time when it is, it is impossible to just be normal. And how you keep that oil, how you keep the last cruise, becomes your responsibility. How you devote time to ensure there is always a cruise of oil in your hand becomes your responsibility. The world will give you a thousand and one reason why that last cruise must be exhausted. You are the one that must preserve and fight for it. So the oil can be representative of the grace and unction. It can also be representative of the very small things that you ignore. As I said earlier, you, could, you, you, can, you, can, you can borrow the vessel of, of, of nice attire, the, the, the vessel of dressing well, but the oil of character must be there for you to see the effect you're looking for. You must, you, must, you must be in a place where strategic ideas are, de- are there before whatever idea you are seeing. Painting your office makes no difference. There are no ideas coming out of it. So Elijah, Elijah said to her, borrow vessels, but you must have oil. You know, let me just quickly say, there's something I wrote that I just saw again now. Elijah said to her, go to your neighbors and borrow. The assumption here is that she was a friendly neighbor herself. And a lot of us, those little nuances are the places where the grace that is prepared for us finds a block. You've quarreled with everybody on your street, from the gate man that opens the gate to the one that opens... And you know that sometimes you come back home late in the evening. So is it your, is it your wicked stepmother that is doing you when you now come back and the guy says, will you be? And they refuse to open. So on the assumption that she, she had been friendly with her neighbors. One of my friends moved to France, particularly for those of you that want to jack moved to France, and for some reason, his neighbor just, it's just impossible. And the average... French person has an attitude. But he said for three, for two years, he never felt each time he saw the man to say, good morning. After a while, he was greeting him in English. After a while, he started trying to greet him in French. Sava, Sava, Wi-Fi, whatever. <laughs> but for two years, he kept greeting him. Two years, he kept greeting him. Until one day, finally, the guy responded. And all of a sudden, realized that the person was even saying Sava, Sava, could speak English. He's given an attitude for two years. The Bible said in the book of Proverbs, let's look at Proverbs 20, verse 10. Just be nice. Just be a nice person. Some of you don't even know the neighbors that live in your compound. Talk less of the one that lives two streets away. And sometimes you realize that the help and the instrumentation that God prepared to bring your miracle to you is in the hands of someone you never said good morning to. The Bible says that your, 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 do not move the ancient landmark. It says your friend and your father's friend do not forsake. It says for better is a neighbor that is close by than a, f- a brother that is far away. Better is a neighbor that is close by. And so when he said to her, go and borrow vessel, it was on the assumption that she was a nice person. Let's go back to 2 Kings 4. And these are little nuances we must, we must obey as Christians. There's nothing like a nasty Christian. Nothing like that. If you're nasty, it's your family trait and your family problem. They should not say it's because you're a Christian. No. Your family problem, the Holy Spirit is still working on. Not because you're a Christian. You're a soul under construction. 
Second Kings back to chapter 4. And let's see how we can land safely. Let's go back to verse, what was this? Did we stop? Verse 4. All right, so let's go on. And so thou shalt say, uh, da, da, da. when thou art come in, thou shalt shut the door upon thee. I'm not going to speak about this. Um, uh, and upon thy sons. There's a lot loaded in this verse as well, but that's, that's, I don't want to focus on that. And thou shalt pour the oil onto those vessels, and that shall set aside that which is full. Verse 5. So she went from him and shut the door upon her and upon her sons who brought the vessels unto her, and she poured. Verse 6. And it came to pass, when the vessels were full, she said unto her son, Bring me yet a vessel. And he said unto her, There is not a vessel. And the Bible said, And the oil ceased. Between 4 and 6 is another message altogether. That's not my focus this evening. Verse 7. And she came and told the man of God. And then he said to her, Go, sell the oil. Go, sell the oil. And the Lord took my attention to that. Sell the oil. Go, sell the oil. And I said, Lord, what are you saying here? And he said, Elisha was saying to the woman, do something different from what you've always done. She's never sold her oil. Do something different. The Lord has brought the increase. I know because you are the wife of the son of a prophet. The first thing that will occur to you is to call a love feast and invite other wives of the sons of the prophet and share the oil. Like I said, that is stupidity. Go sell the oil. Pay your debt first before you start to enjoy yourself. And God is saying to someone this evening, you must differentiate between stupidity and benevolence. God has brought the harvest you prayed for for so long into your hands. With wisdom, you must not only manage it, you must amplify it. You must take steps that will not naturally be your first instinct. The wife of the son of a prophet grew up in a community where they shared things. God has brought the business idea to you. Don't go and sit with someone and say, you know, I have one idea. No, you package the idea. Get your MVP out of the idea first. Before you start throwing ideas that somebody else will carry and run and form something out of it. And I say, ah, but it looks like what I said. No, 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 you know, you know that thing that he said. No, no, this is a different version. Elijah said to her, go, sell the oil. I have a mantra and I have a policy. Except the Lord instructs me otherwise. You cannot make your lack of planning become my own emergency. You cannot make your lack of planning become my own emergency. My kids are in third year in the university. By the grace and mercy of God, I'm saving already towards masters. And someone comes and says to me, eh, 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 you know, Yorubas are, Yorubas are so... They are just so backward in this regard. And I just ask them, <laughs> especially in this day of DNA tests. No, no, no. So your wife has been pregnant for nine months. You didn't lose your job. You, you didn't plan for the naming ceremony. Then you come and meet me and say, No. I normally bring up when they tell me that at work, I bring out the pictures of my children. That, see? Omo, Omo me. You can't make your lack of planning become an emergency. The five wise virgins said to the other ones, no, 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 no. We feel your pain. We'll be praying for, the, for, for you, for the Lord to help you as you go by your own. Don't let people's lack of planning. You know how much you've been saving towards a business. Except where it's life-threatening, unplanned. Someone comes and says, and hey, give me money for it. Ask the person, sit down. Tell me what your five, last two-year plan towards this project has been. And when the person starts to stammer and starts to stutter, say, can we pray? <laughs> and as they, close, as they close their eyes in prayer, 
We pray with them and tell them, Lord, thank you that they've come to this hour of realization. That only Jesus can do the impossible. <laughs> Commend them unto you and unto the word of your grace. It's the one that turns water into wine. That calls those things that be not as though they are. I'm walking in the spirit of maturity. I'm not yet there. Lord, help your son, help your daughter. <laughs> See, what have you done? Say, I've just sown the seed of the, of the 100K you asked for. Go and water it. Next time they see you in the morning, they'll say, ah, guys, say, we thank the Lord. <laughs> Those of you that, that's, I know it's December, but stop doing giveaways. So just say, just do giveaway for the boys, do something. Black Friday. Say, no, I'm a, I'm a child of God. I wear white. It's always white. Praise God. Always white. Always white. And let me say this in particular to the singles. Before I say this to the singles, let me just say that. Don't waste your seed. Don't waste your seed. When the Lord brings you the harvest, you, you know your harvest now, it's even the seed for the next level. So don't waste it. Don't waste it. You know, I want to say something. I want to say it respectfully, but, I, but, but it's really an insult. But I'm, I'm going to insult you respectfully. You know, my mother always said to, to us growing up that whenever anyone says to you, without due respect, they want to abuse you. Say, so just to them, don't respect me, abuse me, abuse me. But I want to respect you. I want to abuse you respectfully if you're in this state. Okay, let me not abuse you. Let me just state the truth. Now, you, you must get to a point, particularly singles, you must get to a point where in your relationship and interaction with the opposite sex, you begin to treat your emotion as an investment. And I'll explain to you. Look, election season is over. Nobody should be using your emotion as a, they, they cannot be using you as a placeholder. Why, why are you quiet? <laughs> Look, there's somebody that using as placeholder. Every time a car breaks down on top of and Bridge, you have to go on the call. No problem. You're there. No, I just have this reliable brother. She has her own brother at home, born of her father. But just stop. Just calls you and says, My car, I mean, I'm in the middle of top of and Bridge. He says, Say no more. <laughs> Say no more. You have, the, you have the contact of, of, of Triple A, all the area boys on top of Milan, you have their phone number. There must come a time when you ask a sister in the Lord, the emotional investments, the emotions I've been using, um, is there going to be an ROI on this? <laughs> a return on investments. And when he says, no, I can't even think, we're just, we're just brothers in the Lord. It's okay. <laughs> It's okay. Or if it's the other way around, it says, no, no, you know, you know, you're just my sister. How can I even think of such thoughts towards you? Ah, uh -huh. <laughs> think the thoughts towards me. <laughs> when it gets to a certain point, I should say, no, actually. Let's define what this is all about. I mean, I'd love to be your friend, love to be there for you, you know, but. But let's be certain that, okay, I'm not a placeholder. In case somebody else comes, you are free and I'm free. Okay, it's okay. Start to see your emotion as a seed. Nobody's using you. You are the one using yourself. So stop allowing people go over you. And so in closing, which is where I've come to this evening already. The year is rounding up chronologically. But there is more to this season than just the, 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 the number of days. There are days in the number. There are days in the number. It's not the number of days we are counting down. We're looking at the days in the number. And if we can get one of those days correctly in any of the number 
of what is left of this year. You will be amazed that what appeared to have been the end of year for you is actually the beginning of a year. But it has to come because there's clarity. You must understand that God has brought you to a season. Whatever it is, you look back at the chronos and you feel it hasn't added up. There's still enough time if you are in the carriers to say, what is the Lord saying? How do I get into what he's saying? And for some of you, it's time to do things differently than you've always done. Ask yourself for once, if I had the opportunity to make certain decisions again, what would I do differently? And that is what I want us to ask for grace as we pray this evening. Let's rise up on our feet as we pray. I want you to talk to God. Talk to God. The son of the prophet wasn't around to face the mess he created. But divine intervention assisted him. We don't have to get to that point. Talk to God and ask him. The days that are left in this, the number of days that are left in this year, I know they are loaded with purpose. Let each day unfold your counsel to me. Let each day unfold your purpose to me. Pray as Paul said in Ephesians 1 from verse 16, that the eyes of your understanding be enlightened that you may know what the hope of his calling is, that you may know what the measurable greatness of his power is at work in you, that you may know according to the working of his mighty power that he exerted when he raised Christ, it's a good time to say, open my eyes, Lord. Open my eyes, Lord. What is the oil that is in your house? You need to preserve. You need to begin to dwell upon. What is your unique selling point that is your oil that you've neglected? What is that aspect of your character that you need to Preserve like oil that the vessels you're pouring into. Speak to him this evening. Have a conversation with him this evening and say, Lord, let your candle, which is my spirit, be lit. In the remaining 14 24 days of this year. Let me see. Ignites the flame of the spirit in my heart. There's someone in the meeting tonight that you've come to the, po- to the place, hallelujah, hallelujah. You've come to the place where you really think there's just no hope. It's time to give up. The Lord says, be still and know that I am God. I don't know how you got into the situation where you are in. It just says to say to you, be still first and foremost. When you are still in that same place where you thought it was impossible to get out, like Ega says, I would open your eyes to see a ram already caught in the thick of the forest for you. But it says, be still. Stop going up and down. Get home tonight and make that commitment and say, God, at this point, I surrender. And see what the Lord would do. 
in the next few days. And so, Father, we thank you for your word. Your, your word that has gone forth will not return unto you void, but it accomplishes that which you've sent it to do. It prospers in that which is your pleasure. Father, we give all of the glory to you. All of the honor we ascribe unto you. In the name of Jesus. Amen and amen.